हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ बीइंग एसीसीए दिस इज तुषिता गुप्ता एसीसीए एफिलिएट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू बी सॉल्विंग द एफएम मार्च जून 2023 क्वेश्चन पेपर इट इज जिनी कंपनी फ्रॉम दैट पेपर आई एम सॉल्विंग दिस ऑन द एसीसीए प्रैक्टिस प्लेटफार्म इटसेल्फ सो एज आई कैन सी दैट द रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड एंड आई कैन हैव सॉरी द सिनेरियो इज ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड एंड द रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर अवेलेबल विद द स्प्रेडशीट ऑन माय राइट हैंड साइड सो जिनी आई कैन सी Uh, that the requirement basically wants me to find out the expected net present value of the project and comment on the financial acceptability this is a pretty common uh, requirement in your fm exam investment appraisal is a very often tested topic in your section c so let's get started jinny company is a listed company that manufactures innovative products for the telecommunications industry jinny company has just developed a new product called the lp500 which is expected to have a life of 4 years so i can highlight some information so that it's easier for me to locate it back jinny company's management has decided that the sales price for the lp500 will be 90 dollars per unit as anything higher than this will dramatically reduce the expected annual sales volume which is currently forecast to be 20000 units per year so this is very important this is alarming information because here there is a high need of the sensitivity analysis because it is mentioned that increasing the price from 90 dollars per unit will dramatically reduce your annual sales volume now variable costs are also given to us includes a bought in component x22 the price of x22 has been volatile due to the supply problems with the manufacturers and consequently the variable cost per unit at present is uncertain the management of jinny company has made the following estimates so these are the probabilities that are associated with the variable costs then we have our incremental fixed costs to be 300000 per year all of the figures expressed are in current year price terms sales price is expected to be 5% inflation variable cost and fixed cost will be inflated at 3% okay new plant and equipment costing 1.5 million dollars will need to be purchased at the start of the year or at the start of the first year of operation and is expected to have a residual value of 125000 in nominal terms at the end of year 4 jenny company pays corporation tax at a rate of 20% and tax is payable at the end of the year following the year to which it relates so this is one year in arrears the company can claim tax allowable depreciation at a rate of 25% per year on a reducing balance basis with a balancing adjustment in the year of disposal so this is uh, the method that they want me to find out the depreciation additional working capital totaling $100000 will also be required at the start of the project working capital inflation is expected to be 3% per year jenny company is nominal we after tax weighted average cost of capital for projects of this nature is 12% so we already have the cost of capital given to us we do not have to make any efforts in working that out so let's get started the first uh, you know requirement is about the calculation of expected npv so i can say that this is part a and this is calculation calculation of the expected npv of the lp500 project right so this can be our heading um we can see that this project has a life of 4 years and then uh taxes payable one year in arrears so i can mention my years over here starting from year 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so 5 because my year for your uh, my tax for year 4 will go in year 5 so the first thing that we consider over here is the sales so with regards to the sales we can say that the units are given to us as 20000 so 20000 multiplied by first of all uh, the price that is given is 90 and this is subject to an inflation of Five uh, percent, if I'm not wrong, yes, five percent per year. So I'm just going to do one point zero five, and then I raise it to the power of the cells so that it gets linked, and I can use the same thing in all of my cells. So this is a four-year project. So this is how my revenues are going to be calculated. Now I come to my variable costs. So with regards to variable costs, we do have to take into account the 
uh, expected value. So what we can do is we can create a working down below. So we can say that our workings start from here and the first working is about the variable costs. So with regards to the variable costs, uh, let's first find out, uh, you know, how much will our variable costs come out to be? So for variable costs, we can say that uh, it is given. Uh, let's first find out the expected value of this. So expected value. Uh, I'm just going to multiply the variable cost with the probabilities to find out the expected value. So 40 into 20% plus 50 into 40% plus 60 into 20% and then plus 70 into 20%, right? So this is, uh, where did the calculation go? Okay, I'll have to type that again. So EV and this is 40 multiplied by 20%. Then you add 50 multiplied by 40%. And then you add uh, 60 multiplied by 20%. Then again, 70 multiplied by 20%. So with this, I have my expected value of the variable cost, which is $54. Now, again, this is also subject to an inflation and the volume is also given to us. So what we can do over here is that my variable costs are expected value at 54. And then this will be multiplied by my inflation. So first of all, let's multiply by the number of units. The number of units was 20,000. So 20,000 multiplied by inflation which was one point uh, which was three percent yes so three percent one point zero three and then i again raise it to the power of the cell in which the years are mentioned so that i can copy paste this across all of my cells so with this i have my variable costs uh, i forgot to lock this cell so if i just lock this i will have my values i can just drag this to the remaining years now <clears throat> sorry so with this i have my variable costs now now i come to fixed costs i can mention over here that my variable costs have been arrived at from working one so that the examiner knows that this is where i have found out what was my expected value now i have a look at the fixed costs so with regards to fixed costs it is mentioned that uh uh, that uh, the incremental fixed costs are going to be 300,000 per year. So my fixed costs, uh, again, will be subject to inflation. So 300, 1, 2, 3. And then I multiply this with 1.03, which was the inflation which was given for the fixed costs. And I will raise it to the power of the year. And again, I can drag this to the remaining years also. So this is my variable cost. Now I can find out how much my taxable flows will be. So my taxable flows will be sales minus my variable costs and minus my fixed costs. Again, I can paste this formula to the remaining cells also. So these are my flows on which tax will be charged. So now uh, the rate of tax is given to us at 20%. So let's find out tax at 20%, right? So in the next year, we are going to be paying tax. So this is this minus 20%. So I can say that minus 20% of this, right? So this is the tax that I'm going to be paying in each of these years. Uh, right. So these are my taxation figures. This is 93.7, 104, 115, and 126. Now let's have a look at the tax benefits with regards to the uh, depreciation, right? So tax benefit, and again, we will have to create a working for the same. So I can say that this is working number two. I can expand the cells a little bit so that the entire thing is visible. And then my working number two is about tax allowable depreciation. So it is mentioned that my new plant will be costing $1.5 million. And the residual value is also given to us as a $125,000. So how are we going to calculate the uh, benefits. So I can put my ears over here, one, two, three, and four. And then uh, let's find out how much the tax allowable depreciation will be. So for the first year, this is going to be 25% uh, 
of my uh, figure, which is 1.5 million. Right, so this is what I arrive at for my depreciation at uh, year one. Now for my uh, year two, uh, it will be the residual value, right? So uh, for the reducing balance basis. So what I have to do over here is uh, 1.5 million minus what I have claimed in the previous year. And then I will get a 25% of that. So this comes out to be my depreciation that can be claimed in the second year and so on. If I just uh, subtract, okay, uh, so 1.5 million minus all of these amounts now, minus this, and then again, I have to subtract this and then 25% of that will be available. Uh, similarly, for the last year also, then in the fifth year, we get a, uh, in the last year, sorry, we do get a balancing allowance. So, uh, my tax uh, allowable depreciation in year four will be 1.5 million minus this, minus this, and then minus this, and 25% of this amount. So, this is going to be my tax allowable depreciation. Right. So with regards to my last year, it is mentioned that there will be a balancing adjustment in the year of disposal. So first of all, I need to find out how much my residual value will be. So this is the value that I have at the end of this time. And if I subtract my scrap value, which is 125,000, with this, I have the residual value that I have at year four. Now on this, I will get a benefit of 20%. So uh, we can find out the tax benefit as tax benefit. And this will be 20% of this figure right above. So 20% of this, and I can drag this to the rest of the cells also. Now this is the amount of tax benefit that I'm going to be getting because of this capital expenditure. So I can link these cells over here for the first year, I'm going to get it in uh, the second year. So this is going to be my benefit. And then similarly, if I drag this, I will have it for the rest of the years also. So now I have completed my tax benefit figures as well. Now let's have a look at what is the next item that we are going to take for our NPV calculation. Now that we have adjusted for tax, first let's find out what will be the after tax cash flow. So my after tax cash flow will be nothing but the sum of all these figures, taxable flows minus tax plus the tax benefit. So it will be the sum of these three figures over here. I can copy paste this to the remaining cells. And with this, I have my uh, figures, right? So now I move on to uh, the working capital. And then I also have my initial investment as well as my residual value. So first of all, with regards to the working capital, uh, it is mentioned that in the initial period, we are going to have to take the working capital of $100,000. So first of all, in year zero, there's going to be an outflow of 100000 And then every year, we are going to have to uh, inflate it by 3%. So my outflow will be nothing but the 3% of this figure. So this is the, uh, you know, capital. Then again, in the next year, it will be 1.03 multiplied by the working capital, which I currently have. So multiplied by the sum of these two, right? So, uh, sorry, only the 3% of that because that's the incremental amount, right? So again, for the uh, third year, I can do the similar working. I can just uh, add the working capital that I have currently, and then I can take the 3% of that because 3% will be the incremental, right? Now, this is the total, uh, now these are the incremental capitals that we are having. And then at the end of year four, which is at the end of the project, we are going to have all the money returned back to us. So this can be found out by calculating the sum of all these figures. This is the money that we are having in the last year. And this will come back to us at the end of the last year. Now, uh, let's talk about the initial investment as well as the scrap value. So, initial investment was uh, $1.5 million. So, minus 1500000. And then I take my scrap value. So, my scrap value that I have is 125000 And this I will be getting in the year 
four. So this is my scrap value. And then uh, again, this is a positive uh, figure that I'm showing because this is going to be an inflow. Now I can find out how much are my net cash flows and then I can put the discount factor on them. So my net cash flows will be um, for the year zero, it's going to be the sum of these two figures only. And then for the remaining ones, I can say that uh, after tax cash flows and then adjusting for all of the things that we have just done. So this will give you the cash flows for the rest of the years as well. And these are the net cash flows that we arrive at uh, after having performed all of our calculations, right? And now I have my discount rate given to me as 12%. It is right over here that the weighted average cost of capital is 12% for these projects. And then I can say the NPV will be, I am simply going to use the NPV formula over here. Here I've put my discount rate, selecting my values from here till here. This will give me the uh, discounted values of year one to five cash flows. And then I add the year zero cash flows because I do not want to discount them and adding why because the minus sign is already present over there. So with this, I have arrived at my NPV figure. If you're wondering why this is different from the solution that has been provided by the ACCA, that is because of the rounding of differences. Uh, so the ACCA solution says that it is roughly $80,000. Uh, and my answer is 78,213. And that is why, uh, why that happens is because I have to, uh, performed all of my workings in full figures where they have used uh, th uh, thousands of uh, workings. And that is why this rounding of difference has arisen. Now uh, I can highlight this as well to show that this is my final answer. Then after my workings, uh, I am left with just last thing and that is commenting on the financial acceptability. So we will say over here that since the NPV is positive, we'll say that the NPV is positive project is financially acceptable. However, we did saw something alarming earlier, right? So what was that? We are assuming that the uh, first of all, uh, one assumption that we have made over here is about the variable cost. We have only taken an expected value. So there is a 60% chance that the variable cost per unit could be less than 54. There's a 60% chance, right? Uh, which is the sum of uh, uh, 20 and 40, that the uh, cost will be less than uh, 54. And this will be beneficial for your NPV. But again, there's a 40% chance, 20 plus 20, that your, uh, you know, the variable cost per unit can go above 54 also. And this will give you a lower NPV. And then again, one more thing that we can talk about over here is that, uh, about the sensitivity that, uh, you know, some uh, increase in the selling price will also dramatically reduce the expected annual sales volume, which is forecast to be 20,000 units. And this can also have a bad effect on your NPV. So before going ahead with the project, you have to consider these factors as well. Now, moving on to the last question, this talks about briefly discuss how your decision in part A will help Gini company achieve their primary objective. Now, this is already uh, pre-populated for you. The format is already given to you. No need to work hard for that also. So we have the, uh, how do we achieve the primary objective? So the primary objective basically for all companies is nothing but uh, increasing the wealth of the shareholders. So since the NPV is positive, so, um, you know, the, uh, the objective basically remains maximizing the wealth of the shareholders and uh, it is given over here that they are a listed company that means they are uh, a for-profit organization so the positive NPV will basically add to the wealth of the shareholders and this is how they will be uh, you know achieving their primary objective so with regards to primary objective you have to talk about NPV adding to the wealth of the shareholders. 
Now let's have a look at uh, part two, discuss three limitations of using probability analysis in deciding whether or not to proceed with the LP500. So there are three points that the examiner wants to talk, uh, wants us to talk about. So three limitations of using probability. So first of all, what we can write over here is that probabilities are uh, long run averages, like probabilities work well when there, there are a long run data available and there are a number of repetitions also. So that gives you a better, uh, only in that situation, the probability analysis gives you a better result. So long term average. So in order to predict accurately using the probabilities, you would have to have a long term average. Then another thing that you can talk about over here is that the, the attitude to risk. So probability, what probability does is that it only takes into account the out, uh, you know, how likely is the outcome, but it also ignores the risks, uh, risk that is involved in this. So if Gini company, you know, likes to take into consideration all the risks, there are chances that there will be a negative NPV. And on the other hand, if they are, you know, all up for adventures, they can go ahead with the 60% chance of variable cost per unit being less than $54. Now let's talk about the third point that you can write over here is, uh, the variability of the outcome. So as we see over here that, uh, you know, the the probabilities that are given to us are 20%, uh, 40%, 20%, 20 and 20%. So maybe what you actually achieve would not be any of these outcomes, right? So there is a possibility that you get some value in the middle of these. So the variability of the outcomes is another limitation that probability analysis has. So with this, we have come to an end to this question. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please feel free to comment down any doubts that you have. Also, you can approach us on Instagram at beingacca. Uh, I hope that this was useful. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching.